Welcome aboard. Justin here from Swift Silent Deadly. I'm sitting here on a cold, chilly, rainy December afternoon, having a glass of Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. Man, this is a beautiful, deep amber bourbon. Very, very sweet flavor profile. That second um, barrel finish in that toasted barrel gives it a very sweet flavor profile. If you like a sweet bourbon, a very corn-forward bourbon, give Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel a chance. It's very, very good. Now, onto the subject that we're talking about today, which is this pistol, the kel P32. Now, had you told me five years ago, two years ago, even a year ago, that I would one day own a kel I would say maybe one of those 30 round 22 Magnums or something. If you told me I'd be carrying one and I was so excited about it that I was going to review it, I would have said you're smoking crack. kel is not known for the best reliability for you know, just executing conventional designs very well. They're basically known for radical, some would say innovative designs. This pistol kind of breaks the mold on that. This is the P32. So this is a uh, delayed blowback operated double action single sack pistol in 32 ACP. This is one of the smallest and lightest commercially available, commercially manufactured, con currently manufactured pistols in existence. This thing weighs seven ounces unloaded, is incredibly lightweight. It's also very, very small. Um, you can see it pretty much fits in the palm of my hand here. Very, very small pistol. And it fires the 32 ACP cartridge, which means it is very light recoiling. That small size and weight does not incur a huge recoil pain penalty, unlike things like the Ruger LCP, which I'll probably compare this pistol and the LCP as we work our way through this review. Now, how did I come to this pistol? I came to this pistol because I was looking for a deep concealment gun a non-permissive environment carry pistol. A pi basically, I joke that it's a gun that I carry when I can't carry a gun. It's exceptionally compact, lightweight, and it's in a caliber that is not punishing in a very, very small gun. Now, credit where credit's due. kel also has the P3AT, which I believe has been discontinued, but that gun was a game changer. It gets a lot of crap, and it's not known as the most reliable pistol in the world, but it's the direct father ancestor of the Ruger LCP and a bunch of very, very compact 380s that we have today. So let's talk about the role of this pistol. This pistol does not replace my Nighthawk Custom 1911. It does not replace my SIG P365XL or even my J-Frame. It, it, it just doesn't. This is a special purpose tool for one single purpose in mind, and that is deep concealment or non-permissive environment carry at least for me. This thing is small and light enough to fit in a pocket. Uh, it all There's also a number of other unconventional carry styles for this thing. There is a, a belt clip, a pants clip, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, that, that bolts directly to the gun. I will show you that at some point in the future. There are necklaces that you can clip this gun into, neck holsters. There are, you know, ankle holsters, any number of ways that this gun could be carried that larger guns could not. And that is the utility of this thing. Again, being able to carry this when you can carry nothing else. And that's what eventually led me to this pistol. Now, just to compare it to a little bit of the competition, I think the other competition are the other 32 autos, which are essentially in current production, the Beretta 3032 Tom, Tomcat, Tomcat, the Beretta 3032 Tomcat, which is similar only in cartridge. It, man, it makes this thing look as ugly as a homemade pair of shoes. It's a much, han much more handsome looking gun. It's a much more interesting gun, frankly, to me. However, it's very, very wide. It's very thick in the pocket and pocket carry is how I primarily carry this. So I want something that's very thin that doesn't print excessively. The Tomcat is much thicker. This thing is only three quarters of an inch thick, which is about as thin as you can make a pistol and have it function at all. The other competition, also it's worth pointing out that the uh, Beretta 3032 weighs, uh, I think starting at about 14 ounces, which is twice as much as the th P32. So it's a pretty chunky monkey compared to the, compared to the Kel-Tec. The other alternative is the C-Camp 
32, which I think is a very neat, very handsome, very classic gun. When I was a kid, I remember reading in gun magazines about those being the backup pistol or the conceal, you know, the hideout gun, the deep concealment pistol. The problem with those is they weigh about three ounces more than this pistol. Now, three ounces, Justin, how much is that really? And that's almost a 50% increase in weight. That is a lot. Uh, the C Camp is shorter uh, than this pistol. I think at both the dimensions, both in slide and grip, but it weighs 10.5 ounces, something like that. And uh, damningly, it has no sights at all. Now, you may be wondering how accurate this gun can be. This is a surprisingly accurate little pistol, as you'll see later in the video. So sights are a must. I, come on, guys, <laughs> put sights on the damn thing. So the Ruger LCP would also be in competition with this. They're very similar looking guns. Why did I not go with the LCP? I looked at it and frankly, I almost did. The LCP has some compelling things going for it. Shoots 380 ammo, which is more common. Now the downside to that, I've owned an LCP and I sold it because it shoots 380 ammo. It's punishing to shoot. It sucks to shoot. I did not enjoy shooting that pistol at all. Um, maybe, maybe you can tolerate it. I could not ah, I take it for what it's worth. Um, but the price point of the uh, Ruger LCP makes it compelling. You can buy them new for about 300 bucks all day long, the original LCP. Now the LCP uh, LCP2 is definitely nicer, but I like the longer, heavier trigger of the LCP of the original LCP for pocket carry. Just my personal preference to each their own, but I like a long heavy trigger if I'm going to be carrying this in a pocket. <clears throat> the other strike against the LCP is it's thicker and heavier it's it's larger in almost every dimension than the p32 and it's heavier at about 9.6 ounces empty that's 25 percent heavier than the p32 this gun for weight it literally can't be beat by another repeating firearm that i'm aware of this is about the lightest thing going on the market and it's not punishing to shoot let's go ahead and clear this gun i meant to do that early on so to clear this you have to insert an empty magazine, you'll notice there's very minimal external controls, but it does have a last round hold open. Let's go ahead and clear the gun. I see the chamber's empty. I don't know if you can see it or not. Magazine well's empty. The gun is clear. So let's go ahead and talk about this particular pistol. Um, first, I'm going to talk about why I bought this. So again, I think I've mentioned it, but I was looking for something for a deep concealment, NPE carry, hideout type gun and this is what i landed on because of the weight because of the caliber and this thing seems to be having a bit of a come up right now chris baker has given this thing a lot of favorable press and i know chris and enjoy his content the suited shootist is a big fan of the keltec p32 i've recently gotten into his content it's hard to find a bad review of this gun out there it's a solid design now one downside to this design it is listed as being in current production, and I do believe it is, but they are very, very hard to find brand new on the market. So I bought this one used. That's why it has this OD green finish. I don't know, actually I'll tell you right now, would not have gone for OD green in this pistol if just basic black or pretty much anything else would have been available, but this is what I could get. I had to buy this on Gun Broker. Now, I feel like I made out okay, this gun did not seem to have been uh, used prior to me buying it, but having to buy a used gun is not the same thing as being able to go to the store and buy a brand new one. I, I get that, and I would have preferred to buy a new one, but that's where we're at. So availability of these is kind of limited. That may be a factor for you. Now, let's get into reliability, ergonomics, accuracy, and portability, the REAP flow chart that we go through. And then at the end, I will talk about the caliber. I'll talk about some bugaboos with the 32 ACP cartridge. So reliability. My first 50 rounds were unreliable. And I'll tell you what I believe is to blame for that. I'm going to lock the slide to the rear again. Again, I bought this used. And it did not appear to have been used very much at all. Now, you'll notice on the barrel, there's a pretty good wear pattern there. There's also some wear on the barrel hood. And if I were to take the slide off, there's quite a bit of wear inside the slide. None of that was present when I got this gun. It looked basically brand new. 
So the first 50 rounds or so, this thing jammed quite a bit. Just at your a variety of malfunctions. I didn't have anything to fail to extract, but had a bunch of just malfunctions. After that first 50 rounds, she smoothed out and she ran pretty well. And I learned a couple things. First, this gun doesn't like to be dirty and dry. So before you take this to the range, I recommend clean or before you carry it. Also, I recommend cleaning it and I recommend lubricating it. You'll notice that I'm not going to lock the slide to the rear, but you probably noticed that this, the barrel was very wet. I keep a good coat of lube on the barrel where it interacts with the slide on the slide rails. I keep this thing nice and lubricated. It runs better when it's lubricated. It does not do very well when it's dry and dirty. I also don't take this thing to the range of the expectation of shooting, you know, two, 300 rounds through it in a day. 50 to 75 is about as high as I go before I feel compelled to take it back home and clean it because I don't want malfunctions to start happening again. As long as you do that, at least with this pistol, I've had great results. And the reviews I see online kind of indicate that this is a fairly reliable pistol, but I still think this is not a gun that thrives under super adverse conditions. We, it's very small. The parts are very dainty and delicate. We kind of want to keep, probably want to keep this thing clean and well lubed. The other reliability issue that I ran into was when adding new magazines. This gun ships with one magazine. That's what it came with for me. I bought two more. And initially on getting those, I had a, a fitful little spell until those were kind of broken in. Now, about the last 200, 250 rounds of this thing have been sewing machine monotonous, just monotonously reliable, boringly reliable, um, perfectly reliable. So that's where I want to keep this thing. So I clean it before I take it to the range. I, luber I lubricate it before I shoot it and I clean it and lubricate it before I stick it in my pocket and carry it. Now ergonomics, let's talk about ergonomics. So again, I've touched on the fact that there are no external controls. We've got this pen. This pen is how you take the gun apart. You pry that out and gently pull it out. The only controls we have on this thing are the magazine release, which is in the traditional American behind the trigger guard spot and the trigger. The trigger is nice and wide and flat. The trigger guard is ample to allow your finger to get in there. Now, if you're wearing super heavy winter gloves, the trigger guard's probably going to be a little small, but for normal use, that's going to be just fine for most adults. There's enough grip, especially with the magazine inserted. There's enough grip for me, and I have, I, my fingers are on the smaller side, for me to get two fingers around there. And I can even, I can even get a nice solid two-handed grip, even though you can't see much of the pistol with a good two-handed grip. Also be aware if you shoot thumbs forward, that if you have longer thumbs than I do, you definitely want to be aware of getting your, of getting that digit out in front of the muzzle. So be, use caution with that. Ergonomic wise, this is a surprisingly good pistol for how small it is. Recoil is also minimal. So this is a honestly quite a fun gun to shoot. And ergonomically, it works pretty well. I am digging this pistol from an ergonomic standpoint. Now, that's reliability, ergonomics. Let's talk accuracy. So again, the chamber's empty. So take a look at that rear sight. It is tiny. Take a look at that front sight. It is tiny. This gun has some very, very small sights. You will notice that I blacked out that rear sight. I just took a Sharpie and did that to make that completely black. Now, rather than using nail polish, like a lot of people like to do, I like to go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and buy an oil-based paint pen and use that to paint the sights. I feel like I get a brighter color. I also feel like it lasts longer. Now, you'll notice that my paint job is a little bit sloppy. I got a little bit on the slide, um, but it still works but it still works. It's still a fairly fast acquiring. Uh, it's not big, but that yellow really, really jumps out, especially in comparison to the green that was there before. So if you were able to see the sights, they actually work really well, especially when you consider how small they are. So I'm going to take a pause here and let you watch me shoot this pistol at 100 yards. It's not hundred percent success, but I think you'll be surprised.
Okay, pretty impressive. No, I think five of eight shots on steel on a man size silhouette at 100 yards with a 2.7 inch barrel Keltec P32. This now, do I think you need to shoot this thing at 100 yards? Eh, probably not, but I do want to know what it's capable of at a variety of distances. I will sometimes hear people say that a gun like this is a belly gun and you don't need to practice with it beyond you know, X number of yards, three, five, seven, whatever your thing is. And maybe this is a belly gun, but if I'm carrying this gun and I'm presented with a problem that is a big boy gun problem, this is all I have to work with. And I want to be able to use it to maximum effect. If that person is shooting at me from 17 yards, I want to be, I want to know what this will do or what my capability is with this pistol at 17 yards. So you'll see me shooting some big boy drills with this pistol. Um, I shot the Wilson five by five skills test. I shot dot, dot torture. I shot the um, uh, five by five drill. I shot the Texas LTC, mod, the Texas modified LTC by Carl Wren. I shot Carl Wren's uh, three seconds or less drill and scored very well on it. Um, this pistol is surprisingly accurate for what it is. The one downfall I would say is those sights are so small. They're just difficult to pick up in a hurry. So that's where dry practice comes in. Uh, Keltec says you're not supposed to dry fire this gun. So I bought a set of Azoom snap caps. I think they're a good idea to have anyway. Working with a gun this small, I feel that it is important to practice. And those snap caps will buy you a wealth of practice for $17. You'll get 100 boxes of ammo worth of practice out of that $17 if you actually use those snap caps. I feel like that's very, very important to point out. Being able to get the gun out and index it on target is incredibly important to be able to fire this thing accurately with any sort of speed. So we've talked about reliability. Um, keep it clean. Keep it uh, keep it clean, keep it lubricated, and don't expect to do 400 rounds in a session, and it'll probably run reliably. We've talked about ergonomics, very ergonomic pistol for how small it is, shockingly so. We've talked about accuracy. Blew my mind with the accuracy out of this thing. Now let's talk about portability, which is where this pistol really shines, and the reason I got it in the first place. This thing carries like a dream. You can literally put it in your pocket and forget that it's there. Now, I don't recommend you just drop it in a pocket by itself. I use this, I've been using this holster, this DeSantis Superfly, which has this very tacky exterior. Um, it's very soft. It breaks up the, it does the things that you expect a pocket holster to do, which are one, hold the gun in the correct orientation, keep it in a consistent orientation. Two, protect the trigger guard, keep anything from getting in there. And you shouldn't carry anything else in the pocket with a pocket gun, by the way. Um, but you should still protect the trigger guard. Keep the gun from wearing a hole in your pants and break up the outline of the gun. It does all those things extremely well. I've been more than pleased with this. That said, I do have a couple more pocket holsters on the way. I have uh, one from Kramer Leather and I have a Micah's holster on the way from Robert Micah. So I'm looking forward to reviewing those as well. This thing carries like a dream. You can literally forget that it's there. It's super nice to just have your hand on it in your pocket, which is one of the huge benefits of pocket carry and how I get some of these super fast draws that you're seeing in the video. This, man, carrying this thing is an absolute dream. Now, let's talk about the 32 ACP cartridge. This is a fairly small, fairly weak, fairly anemic cartridge that has some other problems too, uh, like it's semi rimmed nature. So that can cause some reliability issues. So I view this cartridge as essentially a souped up center fire hot rod 22 long rifle. And if you look at the screen, you've got uh, four cartridges on there, 22 long rifle, 32 ACP, 380 and nine millimeter. So you can get an idea of where that falls. I have no illusions that this is some uber power, powerful cartridge that's, that has knockdown power or anything like that. Uh, this drills tiny little 30 caliber hole. I spend a lot of time working on headshots. And that is a thing that I feel like this brings above and beyond the 22 long rifle. So to make a successful headshot, we have to get into this ocular window or this T that is made up by the eyes and the nose into that cranial vault to the central nervous system to cause that instantaneous stop. The odds that this is going to 
cut into organs and blood vessels to cause enough blood loss to cause instant or very rapid incapacitation. It's kind of wishful thinking. I acknowledge that. So I spend a lot of time working on headshots. What this gives me above and beyond a 22, maybe a little bit less velocity, but it gives me a metal jacketed bullet, which is harder than the soft lead plated stuff in a 22. Again, I'm going to get through the skull and into that cranial vault. And two, it gives me a bullet that's almost twice as heavy at 73 grains versus, I don't know, 40 grains for 22, 32 grains, 36 grains for 22. I'm working with a bullet that's almost twice as heavy, in some cases twice as heavy, because I want the best odds of penetration. That's why I don't carry JHP ammo. That's one of the two reasons I don't carry jacketed hollow point ammunition in this caliber. I've not wasted a single penny on JHP ammo because I'm looking at penetration. If I am presented with a lethal force threat, I want instantaneous incapacitation, and that is the only way to achieve it. Might fire a couple body shots to give him something to think about while I line up that headshot and do a Mozambique drill, a failure drill. But that full metal jacket into the brain box is, is what I want. The other reason I carry full metal jacket ammunition is because you will notice that this round, and I'm carrying the SNB 73 grain FMJ. There's a comparison photo on the screen with the Magtech 71 grain FMJ. The SNB is just a tad longer. And I find that desirable because it goes all like from front to back of the magazine. There's no there's no room for forward to back play of the cartridge in the magazine. That pre presents an issue that is known as rim lock. Rim lock occurs when the top round in the magazine is able to get its semi rim behind the rim on the round below it. Now, this is a serious, serious issue, and it can cause the ammunition to completely bind this magazine up, requiring you to take the magazine apart to fix it. Not what I want to happen if I'm depending on this weak cartridge to save my life. I don't want, just want the one that's in the chamber. I want all of those rounds. So, SMB has a couple things going for it. It's as long as possible. So there's no forward to back play in the magazine. It's very, very difficult I've not even been able to set that up trying to set it up, and I have tried. The other thing that this SMB ammo has going for it, that a lot of European ammo, like SMB and Fiocchi, is if you look at the close up photo, the back of the rim has a bevel on it. So that cartridge, if it does get caught, has something to slide over. It's not a hard ledge, it's a beveled ledge. So if I do get a cartridge over another one, over the rim, it has a chance of sliding off over that cartridge. Guys, this is my take on the kel P32. This is how I carry it, the ammo that I carry it in, the holster that I carry it in, my, my personal experience and my personal opinions on this gun as a deep concealment, non-permissive environment carry gun. I do have some more articles coming on this. I'm gonna review these pocket holsters I may do a comprehensive article on ammunition where we look at ammunition over the chronograph and some other factors. I want to know, like I'm generally happy with this SMB ammo, but I'd like to give you some, some options if you can't find that particular thing. Essentially, I want full metal jacket as fast as it can possibly go eh, to each their own, but that's where my focus is going to be. All right, guys, that's my personal opinions, my personal experience on the kel P32 as a deep concealment, non-permissive environment, hideout type gun. I'm sure I've probably missed something as far as this, the specifications, as far as uh, something with how the gun works or whatever else. If you, um, if you do have questions, there's plenty of other articles out there. I more wanted to relate my personal experiences and opinions with this in this role. And so far, I'm very, very pleased with this gun. To my patrons, Thank you guys so, so much. I deeply appreciate your support. It means the world to me. You can spend your money on any number of things. And the fact that you've found my information valuable enough to spend your money with me means the world. It also powers this thing. 32 ACP ammo is not the cheapest ammo on the market. Um, but I didn't want to bring this review to you until I had a pretty decent number of rounds through the gun. So thank you guys so much. If you're not a patron, please consider becoming one at the $5 level, the $10 level. Man, that helps more than you could possibly know. Also, personal goal, um, 
your patron donations bought the computer that I'm filming this on that I've written the last bunch of articles on. Once I get to 50 patrons, my plan is to buy a GoPro so you can stop looking at this low quality video that's coming directly off my webcam. Um, so that is, that's definitely a goal that's coming directly out of your donations. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to watch SwiftSilentDeadly.com. Stay dangerous.